chapter 3, general requirements, contents. We're going to talk about procurement planning, individual procurement plans, documentation required, and funding, payment, and internal controls. Independent cost estimates. An ICE is the PHA's estimate of the cost or goods of services to be required under a contract. This independent cost estimate must be in the file, signed prior to the deadline for receiving proposals. Some people say, is it independent because a third party has to do it? Absolutely not. It's independent because it's independent of the bids received. You utilize this later for your analysis. The punitive action for not having an ICE in the file is seizure of the funds. Let's remember that we have to have an independent cost estimate in the file for every quote, bid, or RFP we do, or any contract that we assign prior to the award. And for bids, it's prior to the receipt of bids. The contracting officer, as they are responsible for everything else, is responsible for developing the ICE. However, that's going to be done with input from staff and sometimes other consultants. How many of you use architects for your capital fund projects? I hope you do, because you need them. The architects can do that ice for you, and it only costs you a couple of hundred dollars. You take what they give you for that project and list it in the form. And usually capital fund is going to be one firm fixed fee, because it's construction. But it is very appropriate to use the architect to develop that. And it's also very cost effective because architects have software where they just feed the construction information in and the system, which is updated constantly on labor rates, materials rates, spits out a detailed listing of that information. What if our ICE is too low or too high? That's fine. Estimate. It's not a fact. Therefore, what we do is, once we receive the bids and everything, and if our ice was too low or too high, we explain why it was too low or too high. You know, sometimes market conditions, even within weeks for construction projects, really affect the estimates. The ice must be in prior to the solicitation of offers. By the solicitations, they mean the deadline for submittal. You can't do the ice all the time before you even issue the bid or the RFP. Even if you do, it might change during the process based on questions that are asked. But doing the ICE can help the contracting officer to determine the best method. Let me tell you why. Where you guys have sent me an email and asked me questions, here's the deal. One of the first things when they call me and ask something, I'll say, what is the value of this issue? Why do I say, what is the value? Because it's going to be a different answer if it's a million dollars, if it was a thousand dollars. I get people call me all the time and they go, what is the best method, procurement competitive method for me to buy this? How much is it? $500. I say, none. For $500, don't do a competitive solicitation. You know how much it's going to cost by it. It's very small. So I'll ask you the value of that procurement. ICEs are not needed for micro purchases, under 10000 for HUD. Above the micro threshold, below the small purchase threshold, which is 60, it says minimal documentation. I got to tell you something. I do ICE the same for everything. And then I attach any backup. Above the small purchase threshold, absolutely required. Above your 60,000, absolutely. Anything above 3,000 for you in New Mexico, it's going to be required. ICE can sometimes be broken into major categories, the category of each annual audit year. Yeah, I do that for each year. Why? So that they can escalate it each year if they wish. They can give me a, a higher price each year. Work designated and customized for a PHA, such as construction, may require a more extensive estimation. It does. In construction, we break it down by utilizing the schedule of values. Who recognizes that term or schedule of amounts? When we do construction projects, everything is broken into its various elements. To arrive at your independent cost estimate amount, your architect will break it all down into different levels of effort, how much for plumbing, how much for electrical, HVAC, and then he'll get a total. I take that breakdown and put it behind the ice, but on the ice I only list the firm fixed fee, the estimated firm fixed fee. When you estimate how much something is going to cost, 
certainly that is going to help you to reserve funds for the procurement. In fact, prior to doing a quote bid or an RFP, you must ensure that funds are in the budget. You must not go forward with bids without it. I did that one time based on a staff person talking me into it, and eventually my authority got a $5,000 fine from HUD. Waste of government resources because we did an RFP, but eventually it was never approved. So all of that money time that I spent on it, the federal government sees back. So this is an individual procurement plan. How does this help us? Well, it's required for all larger and more complex procurement, though I do them for every quote, bid, or RFP that I have. I just stay consistent. It gives you the established lines that you have to remain aware of, and it helps you determine the scope of the RFP. The individual procurement plans, IPPs, may contain description of the work requirements, what you're procuring and for what purpose it's to be used, who's assigned to take care of it. It helps you to establish the procurement method. We have to decide, are we going to do a, a bid or a quote, which is a low-cost award, or are we going to do an RFP, which allows us to evaluate and consider factors other than just cost? RFPs are not appropriate for everything. For instance, they're not typically appropriate for construction. It says so in section 7.2.B of the handbook. RFPs are not typically appropriate for construction. We'll go over that in chapter 7. It helps you to define the contract administration process and make sure that you have necessary approvals each step of the way. Everything that you have with a quote, bid, or an RFP must be in a file labeled with a separate number. Don't fall into this trap. I'm the HUD auditor. Okay, I, I'd like to see this quote. You go, okay, give me a while. I've got to go over here and get stuff, and over here, and over here. That doesn't work. But people do that all the time. What you need to say is, which quote is that good? Walk over to file, open it, look at the number, and pull it out. Now, sometimes I get behind. No matter what I do, I just make sure that I drop that stuff in the file. I have actually gone into adjudication, arbitration, or court with post-it notes taped to a piece of paper that was in the file, all in order that those post-it notes information was recorded, and the judge accepted them. The other attorney had a fit. The judge goes, no. This is all in the same order he said it, because I sometimes have a hard time focusing. I make notes on post-it notes. Don't throw them away. Put them in the file. They're gold if you ever go into adjudication. You must maintain all records three years after a final payment. Purchase orders usually are for a shorter period of time. Typically, purchase orders might be for a single purchase, a one-off, they call it or it could be tied to a contract. If the purchase order is a one-off payment, how long did I keep them? Well, I, meaning my staff, were doing about 10,000 POs a year. But it doesn't matter, 10,000 or 100 POs for you smaller agencies, the principles are the same. I would keep those POs for that year where the payment was made, then I would keep it for three more years in a file, and then, Every fourth or fifth year, I would go four or five years back and start calling the POs and throwing them away. However, bids, I would keep them. Let's say, what is our maximum contract period for bids and RFPs for awards? Five is our maximum, except for legal, which is limited to three. You might make a note of that. Contracts are five years maximum. Legal is three. But let's say we have a construction project. Now, here's my thought. I usually get construction done in the same year. So for a construction project, including a PO or a contract, I keep it in the file for that year. Then I keep it in the file for three years after. Then let me tell you what I do for just construction. I either scan them in to keep them or I file them away, but you never throw a construction document away. You know why? Because you never know when the roof is going to collapse. And you need documentation to protect yourself. We one time did a, a quote for to stabilize porch overhangs. And later, a porch fell. 
and the this was four or five years, six years later, and the resident claimed an injury. Frankly, it was eventually found that they weren't even there, but that's another story. <laughs> However, when we went to arbitration over this issue, I had all the documentation still in the file, ready to talk with the court, ready to defend our position. If you throw them away, you don't have that. So never throw away construction documents. Keep them forever. Records must be sufficient to defend the process if a protest is filed. And suing me six years later is a protest. Your final solicitation documents, I say it includes everything that you had, you generated per pertaining to that, even notes. Put, put the notes in the file because later somebody may want to say, how did you arrive at this decision? And if I have the notes where I've talked to other people, the emails where we spoke, that will help to defend myself or even just explain it. Reason as to how you develop the contract, the basis of the contract price, we've already talked about and then any contract administration issues or actions you have. We're going to talk about that more in Chapter 11, Contract Administration. Funding, payment, and internal controls. You must ensure work performed is inspected, that you pay invoices prompt, that you have oversight controls, procedures for how you're going to oversee a contract, and then that you follow those procedures, meaning you periodically look at the work, that you only sign for work that was actually completed, and that you document everything to the file.